what happened here in the summer of 1940. 6. Hartheim, not all the story. Hartheim in Austria is the only T4 site outside of present-day Germany. The closest city to Hartheim is Linz, a city of particular interest to Hitler, where he spent most of his childhood. He had major plans for the city, initiating major industrial projects and envisioning Linz as the center for culture in the Third Reich. Hartheim Castle, originally a Renaissance prince's hunting lodge, is eight miles from Linz in the small town of Alkoven, a rural village close to the Danube. The castle has been called one of the most important works of Renaissance architecture in Austria. In 1898, it was donated by the Prince of Upper Austria to be a facility for the feeble-minded, imbecile, idiotic, and cretinous. A marble plaque on the left-hand wall after entering the castle announces this. In gold letters, the names of Franz Joseph I, the emperor, and First Camillo Heinrich Starenberg, the prince who owned the castle, are emblazoned on the plaque. For the next decades, the merciful sisters of Vizenz von Paul staffed the institution. In 1938, after Austria was annexed by Germany, the government welfare department ran the institution. In the spring of 1940, the residents were transferred to other care facilities in the district. It took only a few weeks for the castle to be converted into a killing center. On May 20, 1940, the first transport of patients reached Hartheim. These were the same patients who had recently been transferred to other homes. Between May 20, 1940, and September 1st, 1941, 18,269 disabled people were killed at Hartheim. This was the most killed at one place during the Action T4 euthanasia program. On September 4th, 1941, just days after the formal end of T4, 70 Jewish inmates from Malthausen concentration camp were killed at Hartheim. These were the first of the estimated 12,000 who were killed in the castle as part of Action 14F13. Eventually, prisoners from concentration camps Dachau and Gusen joined those from Malthausen in the Hartheim gas chamber. Though these prisoners were presented to a physician at Hartheim, this was just a pretense to look for dental gold. After the war, the castle was used to house refugees. In 1948, the Upper Austria Welfare Society once again took over, but the situation made it too difficult to look after patients. In 1954, after the Danube flooded, locals occupied the castle and remained in 30 makeshift apartments for the next four decades. When the memorial site was planned in 1995, it was known that residents would have to be moved. In 1999, they were moved to other housing. There is a video with interviews of the former castle residents. In the video, when asked how they felt living in a place where so many were killed, the general reply is, not living here wouldn't change what had already happened. By 1968, the Welfare Society was able to establish a care facility, Institute Hartheim, near the castle. The Society considered the new institute to be a living place of atonement for all the victims at Hartheim Castle. Some of its residents now work at Hartheim. The sandy pink colonnaded courtyard of the small four-story castle is placid, the walls between the ground and first level are decorated with Renaissance-style portraits. On two sides of the ground floor, 
The walls are lined with tomb-like memorials to some of those who were killed at Hartheim. There is a dissonance in the contrast between the subtly colored Renaissance portraits and the stark memorials, many of which include black and white photographs of the victims. Before the site officially opens to the public, a group of workers from the nearby psychiatric institution come to clean the open-air courtyard. I don't know why they are doing this. I don't notice anything that needs cleaning. As they sweep the courtyard, their soft footsteps on the fine gravel echo. Closing my eyes, I imagine the workers might be picking up ashes strewn overnight from the crematorium chimney dismantled over 70 years ago. Hartheim, unlike the other T4 sites, includes a large exhibit on the history and context of what led to and followed from the Nazi killings of the disabled. The exhibit, The Value of Life, starts with the Enlightenment, during which the urge to perfect humanity took root. Industrialization, when individuals were assessed according to criteria related to one's usefulness in the manufacturing process. On the ground floor, another exhibit leads visitors on the same path taken by the 18,269 who were murdered at Hartheim. In the upper left corner of the courtyard is an automatic frosted glass door leading outside to where the garage in which the gray bus is parked. This is now an outdoor memorial. There are rusted steel columns, similar to the ones at Brandenburg, enclosing three sides of the space. The building itself is the remaining side. I re-enter the building through the same place as the patients used. In Alcoven, townspeople noticed. They saw many people brought to the castle, but none leaving. The crematorium smoke created a dark cloud over the castle and spread vile odors. To reassure the citizens, the Hartheim authorities held community meetings. The townspeople were told that the smell was caused by the use of contaminated oil. A warning was issued against persons speculating to the contrary. Franz Sitter was a carer who was sent to Hartheim on an emergency transfer. In 1947, he testified that after only a few days, he demanded an immediate return to his previous post. I could not be held responsible for continuing to participate in such a matter and would rather serve in the Wehrmacht. He was told he was the first such case and was granted his resignation. He was soon drafted into the Wehrmacht. Anna Bertha Koningsegg, who served in the Order of the St. Vincent's in Salzburg, forbade her order to participate in the transport of patients to Hartheim. For several days, she was imprisoned by the Gestapo. She repeated her protest in the Tyrol, and after several months of once again being imprisoned, she was banned from residing with the Order, and the Order's assets were confiscated. During the later killings, Ignaz Schumann, Leopold Hilgarth, and Karl Schumann were part of a local resistance cell, which distributed leaflets about the merciless mass murder of innocent people. The group was betrayed. Schumann, Hilgarth, and Schumann were executed on January 9, 1945. I reached the reception room, where the patients, undressed by the staff, were taken for identity checks and where diagnoses were marked on an assessment form. They were then photographed in a recess behind a makeshift wall. In 1944 and 1945, these rooms had been restored to their previous state. There is scant evidence of what happened here. Only a closer look reveals the found and certified traces which confirms and attests to the history that is memorialized at Hartheim. I walk through these rooms twice to make sure I have not missed a trace. 
walled up doors, traces of gas pipes, impressions from removed tiles. These are the true witnesses. When the U.S. Army reached Hartheim, they found a 39-page ledger book in a safe. The book, now known as the Hartheim Statistics, contains specific information on the T4 killings. Produced for internal use, in the book were the monthly statistics of the gassings that took place at the six killing centers. In the document, the gassings were called disinfection. There is a page that calculated disinfecting 70,273 people with a life expectation of 10 years saved in food value 141,775,573.80 Reichsmarks. Someone named E. Brandt supposedly compiled the ledger. E. Brandt has never been identified. But the information in the ledger coincides with the start and end date of the T4 killings at Hartheim. The Hartheim statistics became the foundation of the war crimes investigation known as the Charles H. Dameron Report, named for the U.S. Army Major and Head of War Crimes Investigation Unit 6824. On November 22, 1945, Dameron wrote to his wife, Do you still have the picture of the castle which I sent to you back in July? Take it out and look at it again. It just looks like a rather old castle that belonged to royalty, doesn't it? But that is not all the story.